Hey guys, Pack here, and well, on November 26, 2021, Kibble the Rapper releases his first studio album, being Snow Globe Theory. And well, I'm not gonna go through a whole guide on every single song on there. If you want to see something like that, but sign it somewhat like short, go check out Versat, who actually gave me the inspiration to actually do this video and told me to do it. And finally, after God knows how long, I did it. So shout out to you, Versat. But I'm not gonna go through all of it. I'm gonna do one song that being do not disturb and I want to give out two different things first or say two different things is that first please take this with a grain of salt I am not Bill Rav or Square I cannot give you the definitive answer to why they said these lyrics I just want to you know give my take and my opinion on it so please be wary of that second thing being I had to record all the lines mostly because a I felt personally they didn't work I feel like I was very quiet you know if you can tell by the way I'm talking I'm more I guess more expressive or not more expressive like more um, you can hear me better that's all I can really say so I guess um, let's begin but before I actually do begin the song I know I tricked you let's talk a little bit about the whole entire album as a whole and sort of the overview of what this album is all about and from Bill's Twitter he says the whole record has a thematic thing of not feeling home on Earth anymore and wanting to go to the moon. In the lore, in my head, Luna is a silent pilot who helps the protagonist build a ship and fly it to the moon. No one knows where she came from. She just appeared. Now, after all of that's out of the way, let's get into the song. Starting with the first verse. Let's do it! Gross petals, falling off of skeletons. My face ain't real. Hollow saber-shaped sticks pull my tendons from the mush. I see Kathy caught me limping through the slush So what if, what if I was wrong? I could say it wasn't me I watched you paint the honeysuckle One and need for buzz and you found me A smile inside a core of the nerves I was vomiting your teeth That was your joy to purge Every second was a lifetime Yeah, I found my mausoleum Buried in my lifelines Every sentence that I uttered was a shield Deep inside the pollen that was smothered in the field I watched the seasons turn gray Every day was the same Drinking all my liquor straight It helped me take in the pain as Bill stated on his Twitter, talking about how this whole entire album shows that he doesn't feel at home at Earth and wants to go to the moon, I think the first vocal song, being Do Not Disturb, is actually a great way to show how he doesn't want to be here anymore, as Do Not Disturb is basically a feature on your phone which lets you block out any communication with anybody. And him showing us this at the very first start shows him how he's ready to go and how he's planning on going to the moon. And the first part, or the first half of the verse, we see that Bill might be talking about a relationship that he once had as he uses past, like, so what if I was wrong, showing us that the relationship they had with this person is over with. And as we continue on with the first half of the verse, there's one little thing I want to mention. In the lyrics, I said that was a joy of the purge, but in reality, after an update, it actually meant I was your joy of the purge. And I think with this new update, I, or update to the lyrics, I can see a little bit more about how maybe Bill wasn't the best person in the relationship, and maybe on the toxic side, and it can basically overall show how toxic the relationship was. At the same time, is the more we continue on with this verse, we can actually see a little twist might be playing on. But as we continue on with the verse, we can see that even though they're in the bad relationship, every second was a lifetime. They felt they can trust each other, and felt like in a relationship, they, this might actually work, but sadly, we know this is not going to work out in the end. After we continue this, we can see that Bill has more of a great outlook on everything. And this might be a company to the fact at the very end of half of this verse, we can see that he takes alcohol to keep in the pain that helps him keep him straight. And this might in turn talk about how he sees everything gray now as he talks about how he watches the seasons turn gray. Even though in most people's eyes, when we look at a season, it's very colorful, it's very bright. But now, after all this relationship and all the problems he had with this relationship is now gone and over with and he's trying to recuperate or recuperate he sees everything in a more negative way about how everything looks great to him now instead of a very bright or colorful way but nonetheless let's continue on with verse one on me forehead temple charge rental dangling my feet above a kibble starved kennel off a triple bar pen above the pad but they refused to me you made me shift my goals i made you move your feet and now i'm losing sleep what you want to talk about hit the pink yacht i watch the darkest parts falling out I 
I also added the chorus as well with the last ending of the verse. So let's talk about those two. And well, I, there's a clever wordplay that Bill is using right here when he talks about palm, palm, I mean, palm meets forehead, temple charge rental, digging my feet above a kibble star kennel. Now the first part is what I really want to talk about is how he uses his wordplay that he always uses, which I like. Is how he basically talks about how him face palming himself and him destroying his temple, which is a specific specific part in your brain. And well, he broke it, so he has to get charged for that. So I wanted to explain. I did, I guess that's more or less just me uh, liking his lyrics. I know this is supposed to be like a genius like title thing, but I'm more or less just I guess just enjoying myself talking about Bill's lyrics and how like I guess he works and how he does his stuff. So yeah. Um, but as we continue on, you can see what I talked about before at the very start when he says, you made me shift my goals, I made you move your feet, and now I'm losing sleep. Now, in my personal opinion, what I think is going on is that Bill was manipulated by his lover to change what he thought his goals or what his achievements was to be able to be with this person. As some people in relationships, they will try to manipulate their lovers to basically do their do stuff for them in return for affection so that's what I'm thinking about and also there's actually some good stuff because as we continue on with the chorus I'll talk about a little bit more later on that actually works well with my little theory I have but as we continue on the last two I guess sentences hit the piano or piano I'm gonna say it's so wrong sorry watch the darkest part falling out also works with how Bill talked about how the seasons in his eyes were turning gray and well when you think of piano or piano I'm gonna say it so wrong. I'm so, so sorry you think of mostly people when you hit a hit hit that I'm gonna just say it uh, you see candy and everyone's very happy they're all eager to get his candy but in Bill's eyes he's more or less thinking of a very gruesome way he thinks about you know instead of candy he might think of more you know I guess brutal more you know way to show how his mind is now changed and how he just feels alone with no one to comfort him so let's continue on with the hook well I call it chorus but it's the hook now onto the chorus and basically or I guess hook but this is basically the biggest, like, I guess, point I have to make about the theory I have about this whole entire song as a whole. And basically like, the biggest reason as to why I wanted to make this video to begin with. And is that, I ain't afraid of no ghosts, so why are you stuck in my wall? I'll pull the leash from my throat, D&D on my phone, I hit the road and I'm gone. Um, in my opinion, this is, like I said, my opinion. I think this is talking about how, due to the fact that he's been with this lover, he's in this relationship with his lover no more and how all the stuff that he was forced to do with this lover and all the stuff he had to do like changing his goals him losing sleep and now he's like stuck she's stuck or them stuck in their brain or bill's brain shows that he is paranoid how he feels like he done he messed up he done something wrong and feels like he's alone and he can't tell no one about this so what he does is do not put do not disturb on his phone and then he hits the road and in turn that makes him want to go to the moon so that's basically what my theory is. It also probably my favorite part of the whole entire song is hook. I don't know why, I just really like it. But in my opinion, this is what I think. He thinks of his past relationships as a ghost stuck inside of his walls and he can't get it out. He's trying to, you know, pull the leash from his throat, pull the collar that he had with this person, you know, that was controlling over him and try to take it out. And he tried to hit the road and be gone with all this and doesn't want to deal with any of that all. And that's basically my whole entire uh, theory about this whole entire song of how he wants to leave, put his phone on Do Not Disturb, and hit the road, and he's gone. So yeah, now let's get on to verse 2 being Square's verse, and also verse 3, Rav's verse. I don't know what took so long to say Rav, but <laughs> sorry about that. I also clapped, God damn it. Uh, recording's bugged. Okay, but <laughs> let's continue on with those two, which is kind of difficult for me to try to, you know, explain. So... Let's find out. All thorns meant for flesh, fresh off some epithets, pants off and left for death. Can't stop the edge of sketch. Wow, look at this bozo. Prosper never froze on, lost but never frodo. Confident with some old gold. Toss him in a hole and watch the optimism grow. Another toxic chemical to spread across like tentacles. Show colder like Hulk Hogan, hope for the like close no land. Forty days are always just the off me when I hold. Now with Square's verse, now his whole verse, in my opinion, is just him showing off how he can spit some mad bars, in my personal opinion. Now for me, I'm going to just count and explain all the references he makes. First up, we're going to skip the first sentence. I know, you could yell at me in the comments. Firstly, we have Etch-A-Sketch. 
which if you don't know what that is, I feel very sorry for you. But for you, but for the, those of you who don't know what that is, it is a mechanical drawing toy. Next we have is yeah, let's skip that one. I don't want to explain that one. I'm just gonna put this image that I that I saw when someone did like the meaning for it on the lyrics in Genius. So uh, yeah, that's 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 the explanation for that one. Next we have is Prosper, Never Frozone, Lost but Never Frodo, confident with some old goals. I think in my opinion, this is sh just to show how Square feels about himself as he doesn't feel like he's Frozone, nor does he not feel like Frodo. Next is we have Hulk Hogan, a professional wrestler, and how a chokehold is basically a very common thing to do in wrestling where you basically chokehold your opponent and win most of the time. Also forgot to point this out, this also shows his little wordplay he does, how he uses Hulk Hogan chokehold to rhyme with fold like clothes, or fold like clothes, sorry about that. Now one other thing I want to point out is there's some biblical meaning in this verse. An easy thing is to point out is the note lent 40 days, but also in the word prosper, as it's used to explain to help out on the road or especially in reaching. Now if we use these two things I think as well with the last thing that Square says. Just an off beef when I, I think it shows how Square wants to go and do the same thing like what Bill's doing right now and leave as he uses Prosper as a way that he might want to reach out and help Bill leave this place and rather than participate in Lent, he rather hit the road and he's gone, which is also a great way to se segment about Rav's verse of how he says at the very start of his, he talks about as he uses in the hook, pulling the leash out of his throat. So let's talk about Razverse now. Now with Ravverse, it's kind of hard for me to explain, as with Squaresverse, I can explain how it might be related to the whole theory I have, but after some thinking, I actually might have a way to actually might point it all together and actually combine all three verses and explain my whole entire theory as a whole. But nonetheless, let's continue. I've already pointed out that he made a callback to the hook saying, I pulled a leash from my throat. In my opinion, I feel like Rav might be showing what might have happened if Bill would have stayed in that wishship with that person. As he feels like he's losing everything, as he has to fill all the memories he's lost, filling the gaps in his head. Him losing his life to the person and making him forced to do things he wouldn't want to do to himself. I drain my veins, try to swap out every spatter of red. Next is him feeling that no one should have ever go through that pain, so he nails the doors and windows shut so as to not scatter the threat. Next he does something, in my opinion, I think is the only option he has left, is to end it all. As in the last sentence, he can, as you can hear him, he says about his eyes are rolling back and how he's choking the life out of him. As he's doing this, he tries to clean all the sins as he might have had and stain it with all with regret. And the last part of the whole entire verse, as he's slowly killing himself, he thinks to himself on why he's trying to get and stay back, stay in this toxic relationship instead of trying to follow that shadow or ghost. He should have lead lead that ghost or to something else, a better life for himself. As it comes to the end, we hear him sp spit his initials as he technically as he does in most of his songs. And as he fades away, it comes back to the hook, ending us off. Maybe the shadow was the ghost Bill was talking about. Who knows? It's for you to actually find out, or for you to might you know the crypt, as my explanation has been said, and. Like I said before, at the, end of the, at the start of this video, it is my opinion, so please take anything with a grain of salt. This is what I think, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm just going off my script. I'm not like, this is me just blabbering on, but thank you guys for watching this video. This took so long, this took, you know, it took more time than it had to be, I guess mostly because of recording. I know most people already logged off, but the few people that are here, I want to thank Birds Hat for actually 
helping me, or I wouldn't say helping me, but I don't know, uh, inspiring me to do this video and, you know, actually telling me to keep on going, so thank you for that. Thank you guys for watching, you guys have been the great. I know I, you know, said words, like, it's not the best, I'm gonna tell you right now, this video is probably not the worst video you're ever gonna see. Yeah. In my opinion, I tried my best to do what I want to do, and well, I showed it to you guys, so there you go. So thank you guys for watching, I've been back, and for Bodhi, here's the outro. I know. You're gonna question why is that the outro, but it's for Buddy. So you're welcome, Ray. See ya in the next one, which is probably never or sooner. I don't know. I'm gonna keep blabbering on. The more I keep blabbering on, the more I'm putting it hard on my editor, on my on my editor, i.e., being me. So yeah, see you guys. I'm out. Yo, big up the youth them way out of Kingston. And I wake up this morning and me see the thing turn up. Internet gone mad. Respect, you don't know. The soul power of the yard. Booyah!